Well, hello there, people, and uh, welcome back to the channel. Now, here's an update on the Belarus MTC 52 or 520. Uh, I did a lot of works, and I'm going to sh start showing you what I did. Now, first and foremost, uh, I had to change a lot of things. Now, if you can see, I, I put an, a better used coolant tube for the starting engine, and this engine because it's a starting engine, has also a different thermostat in it. I mean, the thermostat's the same, but the housing is what you really want to pay attention to. Now, you can't buy this housing anywhere anymore, and usually they are just... the alloy just corrodes away and they leak like hell. Hopefully this one's better than the last one I had, because that one was completely... Oh, I have to trim the silicone, but never mind. I mean, the main thing is that this one shouldn't leak. Now I also replaced the fan. Now the old fan had cracks forming on these flanges. Now if you start seeing cracks, you just have to discard this one. It's 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 no good. Then I had to also replace the crankshaft bolt with the correct nut. And don't worry, I will, I will list the parts numbers in the video description if you're interested what it ex exactly is. So the old bolt was sheared off because people use the wrong tool and and well even if it's the wrong tool it's a worn wrench and then it's just skips over the hex and then you have a nut that's pretty much just gone at all or you, you just can't put anything on there it i think it's a 32 socket you have to use on these and the reason why i took this nut off was because i needed to adjust all the valve train now the valve train itself was just gummed up. There was a lot of gunk. Didn't bother him to film it. I did clean the breeder, put a new, put new things. Here. This is the old one. This part's completely new or used, and this probably is the newer one because it doesn't have a bracket for this, uh, this hose here or this this tube. But anyway, I did actually put the valve lash here. Most of these valves had less than 0 0.15 millimeters of valve lash now you should have uh at least 0 0.25 so this engine didn't have its valves adjusted for a long long time so that was the main reason i went in there so starting engine gas tank cut cleaned up what else there's still a leak here i have to fix that also i fixed the the rod for the gas pedal. Basically the old rod, let me show you, the old rod looked like this. Now, as you can see, well, I mean, this one, this side doesn't look this bad, but someone's welded here and the other part is, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's gone. It's, it's, it's no more usable. So I, I used a very generic one I found in a scrap pile and it it actually clears this 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 clearance and it doesn't bind so that was the main issue and this is from a Belarus 600 so this is way better than the original one is trust me you're gonna have a easier time going up and down this ladder than the original one now let me show you what I did with the carrier bearings now as you can see this is fully assembled and it is a bit stiff because the bearing needs to work in and also these bearings I got are way tighter tolerances than the ones I got out but I didn't put the dust shields back on because um, those dust shields were just they're not really useful in this application and you can get away with it and we can I can always add later the dust shields that's not a problem the main issue with this thing was there's way too tight tolerant bearings that got in uh, it doesn't come open really easily um it's if you're going to dismantle it just have a take it off if you can i can take this one off because it has huge uh huge let me say it's just an internal hex nuts that i can't open because i don't have the tool so if you're going to rebuild this definitely have a hydraulic press and try if you want to buy one don't buy the chinese ones because well, as you can see, the place where I hit with the hammer accidentally, uh, they're chipping. Just basically, this casting isn't good. 
I mean, anything inside is good. I mean, if it's not binding, it's just like, yeah, it, it turns, but it's it's a bit stiff. It needs working. So this one get done. I waited for the parts like two weeks because a few of these things the vendor had to search out and they're available, but really I'm going to, sh to say that it's, I mean, if you have an OEM one, try to salvage it. Don't buy the cheap one. That's that's all I'm going to say for 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 this application. Now these are the parts that this discard from the carrier bearing. This is the the I don't know. This is called basically it's a bushing with the O ring in it. Yeah, it's 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 no good. It's it's too soft. Also, some of these discs that engage with the tube shaft. These are. These ones I discarded are bad, and these are the dust shields that really don't do anything there. And the bearings I used are is this company, so not being sponsored by them, but really, if you want bearings like like this, is the cheaper. These are these are not the cheap ones, but they're kind of in the middle. And you know, anyone else I know who has used these has had good success with them. So yeah, Baltic Bearing Company, go check them out. Link maybe in the description. So, um, yeah, so I changed the bearings out and while I did that, a friend of mine came over and gave me this application. Now, these are the rocker arms for the 520 engine or the D4, D50 engine, actually. And they've been sitting around in his garage since his father died in years ago. And I cleaned them up. I mean, these look fine. These looks fine. Well, these ones are a bit very many to get the grindstone but overall anything else here is just you know usable i mean the rocker arms don't wear off uh, you can get away with putting a newer style rocker arm but you have to remember that the older ones use a tube to oil the rockers and the newer ones have a bolt that goes into into this in the block that the oiling comes from uh basically there's an oil canal that feeds directly into the into the rocker arms, so they are they're different, they're interchangeable, but um, you may still have to use the older style. You can use the rockers, but you can't use, I think, these parts, those are different, so because the oiling system's there. So, this one also not too bad. I'm going to pretty much just cover it with oil and put it away because if we if I do ever need this part I at least have something to work with so also not obtainable anymore from the store because these have been out of production since since the late 70s so yeah go figure so overall in this video I wanted to talk about the things I did I mean we have accomplished something and hopefully uh, also that power steering unit you saw that's now rebuilt wasn't fun when you have to fight with rain and mother nature all the time, but definitely need a shop and I definitely have to start looking for an oil sponsor because man, the more I work with these things, the more I find things to really, that are really just bad because of years of neglect. And let me tell you, if you're buying one of these, uh, yeah, you, you have to have really a huge wallet at certain points because a lot of these things, the more you dig into them, the more you find problems that need to be addressed and not, you know, be, be put on a hold for the future. So anyway... Uh... Okay, a little bit of update. I actually removed this old steering poster and the hood. Now the hood isn't really the problem. You can lift it alone. This one's a bit heavier, but I also cleaned this front poster mount. These are the towels that we need to align. So my idea is I'm going to try to, uh, I don't know, swap it in alone. You definitely need a hoist or a front loader or at least two people to do this, but I'm going to fire up the red tractor and we're going to see if my plan works.
so as you could see the hardest part was actually installing this and you know with two people it's rather easy and with the hoist but definitely you can do it alone if you use the correct setup as you saw from the video well i guess now we can assemble the rest of the tractor and uh, see where we go from there Okay, I'm back. Well, uh, good news is the tractor is now complete, but I ran into some unexpected issues. Let me show you what those issues were. As you can see, the machine is now complete and ready to be started, but uh, I accidentally did, did a mishap. Now, remember this carrier bearing for the front wheel drive. Uh, first of all, one of these keepers fell out and I was like, okay, that's not a big deal. And then I discovered the keeper is just so worn. We have to get a new one because these drive shafts or these, you know, at the drive shafts, uh, the u joints didn't come with new keepers. So, well, I guess, uh, I'll be just, I scavenged some good used ones, but then, uh, I started, you know, manually trying to engage the front axle and I'm like why doesn't it like like there's some clearances missing or I don't know and then I remember like uh oh like I accidentally put these uh there's these washers and I put them in the wrong way now granted it doesn't destroy anything but we we had no front wheel assistance no front wheel drive no rear axle Ah, oh, I just have to take it apart, but that's not even the worst that I discovered. I don't know why I decided to cut out all of a sudden, but anyway, this is a universal starting engine. You can put it either left or right. It has all the plugs, and as you can notice, that there's actually a plug if you're uh, starting engine is full of uh, choke. You basically unscrew this. This is actually someone has put a grease fitting because you know they used to they lo they they've lost the plug or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, because we're going to fix the starting engine. We're going to have going, we can actually freaking rope start this thing. I mean, we don't maybe don't need a starter. And this one here. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll change out the pinion as well. This one, I don't know. It's 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 worn. It's it's not good. This one here, it just pours out, and when you try to start it, all the gas would just fly out like that. And I don't know. This engine, I'm not going to store it into scrap because with starting engine like these, you definitely want to have at least a dozen of these because small bits and pieces and a lot of these things are just normal in production so yeah i'm i'm leaning towards uh fixing swapping the starting engine and maybe the pinion i don't know then we can start this thing because uh yeah obviously if the starting engine is bad well we ain't gonna go anywhere well so i hate this to leave this into a cliffhanger but this video mostly is just, you know, you saw the tractors now assembled. The radiator holds coolant. Uh, you know, the power steering, steering column seems to hold fluids in. Uh, I did find some other miscellaneous leaks that I get fixed. One bad leak is, you know, on the dashboard. And I'm going to see maybe I can fix it without any problems because you know this thing is just neglected so many years and no wonder you have a bad starting engine pinion seals etc so yeah hopefully in maybe part three we'll able to start this thing without problems i know the diesel engine will start but this starting engine issue is just okay like fix it now or don't fix it at all so i'm kind of have to do it so anyway that's it for this video nothing really exciting but the next one will hopefully start the engine and hopefully we'll do something much more fun than this so stay tuned and thanks for watching